we are going to talk about three things that AI is not, large language models are not in particular. And then we're going to cover seven use cases that large language models are really good at. And the reason why, and if you followed my TikTok at all, you know, I get really insistent that we not treat a large language model as if it was a magic wand where you could just sort of wave the magic wand and it will do whatever you want. I think it's important to understand architecturally what they're designed to be good at and then what they're designed to not be good at because any design makes trade-offs. And in this case, the trade-offs actually show us the kinds of jobs that large language models are actually not very good at as well as the kinds that they are. So let's get into it. So this is the, the number one thing they're not good at. And this is the thing that made me think of this. I don't know about you, but it feels like there's been an enormous amount of news that has broken over the last week or so in the middle of July. Large language models are absolutely terrible at handling breaking news, unless you put them into some kind of tool chain that's only looking at a select body of text that is authoritative, that is considered breaking news, they're gonna do badly. And they're going to do badly because fundamentally large language models are designed to handle large bodies of text. They are designed to look across the entire internet and to say, what is the next token predictor for a given query based on my understanding of the entire body of text on the internet, all of the written works of humanity, etc.? That makes them good at certain things. It's kind of amazing that we built a machine that can do that. But if you look across all of that and you have this tiny sliver of text that comes in that's brand new, that's supposed to be a new authoritative fact, LLMs just don't know how to handle it. And that actually suggests an inherent weakness for LLMs going forward. We are continually adding new facts to the body of knowledge for humanity. Every newspaper that comes out, there's a whole series of new facts and new events. We need to have a more deliberate way of upgrading our LLMs on cadence so that they are up to date on the facts. Right now, we don't even have an idea or a concept of a world where you could open up ChatGPT in the morning and say, oh, good, I see that it's read all of the newspapers from yesterday. It's up to date on the facts, let alone same day news. Inherently, if your job is to predict the next token from a large body of tokens, you're going to look at that large body of tokens. You're not really going to over index on this one tiny piece of breaking news. And that's what makes large language models really, really terrible at handling news right now. They're just not good at it. Another thing that large language models are really bad at is making decisions. I say this because even if they give you advice if you ask them to. They are incredibly persuadable. They're actually designed almost to be mirrors. They're designed to respond to you in a way that you will find appealing. And that makes them really, really bad at actually making hard decisions. So if you ask them to list pros and cons and to make a decision, they tend to be over optimistic in my experience. And if you ask them to reverse the decision, they tend to be easily persuadable and reverse the decision because they're token predictors. They're not thinking in symbolic logic. They don't have any idea of really what a decision is. They're just predicting the next token and they're predicting a token that they think is going to be able to keep the conversation going. And they're predicting a token that they think will match the query. And that's, that second piece is actually more important. I'm not sure that we actually know for sure that they are trying to juice LLMs so that you keep talking with them. I certainly wouldn't be surprised given our history with social algorithms as a tech industry. But for now, what we really know is that they are designed to respond to a query and your query reveals your own biases, your own opinions. And anyone who's designed surveys can tell you, you can write a survey that will get anyone to tell you anything. It just depends on the kind of question you ask. Similarly, when a large language model is being asked a question, it will read all the nuances and detail in that question, the unique human utterance that you make, and will then respond with a token and a string of tokens that's designed to match exactly that question. And so it becomes an intensely suggestible conversation, and that makes it very, very bad at decision making. And this brings me to the last thing that large language models should not be asked to do. 
Do not ask a large language model to make a management decision. And yes, I am deliberately tipping my, my hat here to Asimov because Asimov wrote in the three laws uh, of robotics that uh, a number of things that robots should not be asked to do. And that got expanded over the years into a LLM should not be asked to make a management decision. So actually, while we're doing this live, I am not going to chat with ChatGPT, but I am going to find out for you where the rule came from uh, that a robot should not make a management decision, because I think that's super interesting. Let me see here. Um, it's an IBM presentation from the 1970s. See, this is why we need to find our sources. I thought it was Asimov. And then I remembered live that Asimov's three laws of robotics are not about management. They're about ethics. And as I was doing that, I realized I needed to get better sourcing. And so it turns out that this comes from an IBM presentation. Uh, IBM, of course, built some of the first AI tooling. Um, and I think the idea is a sticky one. We should not have large language models making management decisions if they're bad at decision making. And I think we sometimes expect that. And you can't have the kind of business judgment that you need from an LLM. It's just not going to work. They're designed to predict what you give them. And so they will be far too suggestible to make good choices. And we will probably over index on the choices that they do make. By the way, you should check your facts. That was a nice little moment there, right? Like I'm modeling that. Go check your facts. Don't assume the LLM is going to give you the truth. Okay. We're going to go to part two. Those are all things that large language models are not good at. What is What are large language models actually really, really good at? What are they designed to be good at? Number one, they're phenomenal at synthesizing. I can give a large language model a 50 page document and it will take a couple of seconds to read it. That is so much faster than a human being. I think we lack categories for it mentally. It, it still feels like magic to me when I stick a 50 page document into an LLM and it just digests it like that. And then it synthesizes it. And increasingly it acts as a precision recall device for it. That part has gotten better. It used to be much, much more hallucinatory. And because of the updates in the background to our core modeling, LLMs are as of this time, July in 2024, much, much better at precisely pinpointing where in the document something happened and recalling it accurately. And I think that's credit to the model builders, credit to OpenAI and others who have actually worked to make sure that that's true. So synthesis is something they do well. They will summarize something for you. They will describe something for you really effectively. So for instance, if you upload an image of a chart, or if you upload an image of an equation, or if you upload an image of a house or a motorcycle, or even a fairly complex crowd scene, large language models are at the point where they can understand that scene and describe it really well. And that is partly because of all the work that's been done that I haven't talked a ton about on the image generation side, where we have had similar advances driven by this idea of being able to reliably predict patterns and images and generate reliable images from a body of images. It's a similar macro motion to what we've done with text. It's just on the image side. And so large language models have sort of put that together. I know when uh, ChatGPT 4.0 came out, one of the big points was that it actually had a native image in jest. Uh, more work is going to be done there. But even now, describing images is something that LLMs do really, really well. And you might think, well, that's not super relevant, but it is because a lot of what humans have to do at work involves describing images. If you're looking at a chart to gain insights, you're describing an image. If you are conducting analysis of a diagram, you're describing an image. So there's a lot of pieces of work that we do that amount to description. If you're writing a how-to guide for a piece of software, you're describing an image. It's just a series of images. Okay, so they're good at synthesizing. They're good at describing. They're also 
eerily good at pattern recognition. I would argue that large language models probably know more about grammar than any living linguist. There is something phenomenally effective about the way they've mastered human language. And that pattern recognition extends into asking it to understand patterns in documents you upload. It's it's just something they're really good at. And I think that's one area where we're just cr scratching the surface of what we can do with that amazing pattern recognition capability. Number four, they're good companions. And whether or not we like that, regardless of how we feel about it, they're really, really good at engaging people in conversation and feeling like there's someone else on the other side of the line. And that is something that people are responding to. There is a reason that AI companion apps do so well in the app store, like it or not. And that gets me to the next point. They're excellent conversationalists. And I separated those out because a companion is sort of an emotional function that an AI provides uh, help with, whereas a con conversationalist is someone who can help you debate or understand something better yourself. So if you want to debate and understand a particular known corner of study, like if you're trying to understand an advanced piece of physics or a piece of chemistry and the concepts aren't making sense, you can have a conversation with a large language model and it will help you. It will help you understand it. Now, if you only depend on the large language model, we've actually done some work there and it turns out that you don't learn as well if you're only depending on an LLM because it ends up becoming something you lean on when you really should be doing your own critical thinking. But if you need to wrap your head around it the first time, it can be very effective. All right, we're getting to the second to last thing that they're good at. So I've, I said seven, right? So we have synthesizer, a good describer, a good pattern recognizer, a good companion, a good conversationalist, and then number six, they're a good business writer. They're absolutely phenomenal at business writing. And I differentiate business writing and literature because literature requires a degree of attunement to the lived experience that LLMs just aren't good at. They, they aren't embodied creatures. They don't understand how to write literature. And I have seen people try and it just falls apart, but they're absolutely amazing at writing business. Like if you need to write a quick update for the boss, very good at it. If you need to write even a one pager, if you have a solid idea and you can critique it, it's good for drafting. So they're good business writers. And the last thing, number seven, they're really, really good analysts. That means that if you set them up and prompt them properly, they will actually analyze and assess what is in front of them very, very carefully. And I think it's that attention to detail that is really helpful. They look through with unfailing attention across the entire body. Like if you ask a financial analyst to look with the same degree of attention that an LLM does across the same degree of text, either it's going to take forever or they just won't, like they'll skip out. And that is something that we're still getting used to. This idea that you can have an analyst that is always there, that is always at your fingertips and that is always thinking things through. That's a new one for us. It's like we have a personal analyst at our fingertips. And I think maybe that's where I'll sort of wrap this thing in a conclusion. The things that LLMs are not good at, we seem to expect they'll be good at. And I would say the things that LLMs are good at, we have a lot of feelings about as humans. We think these are things that humans should traditionally be good at ourselves. And we worry that having an LLM be good at them means that somehow we are less. And I would argue that it just means that we have more time to do other things. And it means that we have more options to do more interesting versions of those same tasks. I do not miss when an LLM writes business updates and I can like draft them very quickly from the LLM draft and I'm done in half the time. That's not something that I wish I could do more of. I don't regret having a first pass at charting analysis. It's great to have a first pass. And so I, I think that one of the things that we are going to need to get used to is the idea that maybe we've thought of software as something that is very for everyone. And maybe what LLMs are reminding us is that LLMs can be personal, software can be personal now, 
And we can have effectively a personal assistant at our fingertips that can help us with a lot of these functions that we're asked to do. Because if we work professionally, we're asked to describe, we're asked to pattern recognize, we're asked to be conversationalists, we're asked to be analysts. It can help to have someone in the background who's very good at those things. As long as we don't ask it to do the things it's not good at, like make decisions or break news. All right, I will leave it there. I hope that this has been a helpful breakdown. Three things that LLMs are terrible at and seven things that they're actually pretty good at. Be curious to know uh, what you think I missed in the comments.